here's, here's, here's the real life situation of the beginning of worship is since we have barbecue grills and things out on the back porch because we're going to have this barbecue after church, we can't climb over all that stuff to hang the bell rope. So, um, so how about if we all just say bong, bong, bong <laughs> ten times. Ready? Bong, 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 bong. <laughs> all right. Welcome to your sanctuary. Please stand, and if you turn to the green pages, the first song is written there. And Barbara, if, she, if you would play it through one time, then we will join you, because we only have the lyrics in our bulletin. Four? Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you 
and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the de uh, ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speech will sing for joy. The waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Here with the Spirit of saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Psalm, <coughs> Psalm 146 in the middle of your green insert, and you will read it responsibly by verse. <coughs> Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will pray, sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, whose promises are kept forever? Who gives justice to those who are oppressed? and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger and sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. You are God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Ephesians. Uh, three? Thank you. So, <laughs> One of those guys. I read Epistle from Kings. <laughs> okay. My brothers and sisters, we with you, your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. So if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothing, say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to the the heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become trans a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Here with the Spirit is saying to the church. God. <clears throat> so for our sequence hymn, I want to invite you to just relax and listen, and Danny is going to play a song, which is actually, <clears throat> excuse me, it's 
It's from a recording called Isaiah by a friend of mine, John Hermanson. And he, if you look back at the Old Testament reading, it's, it's his adaptation of that. So we'll just take a moment and listen to Isaiah 35, 4 through 7a, put to music. I will be reading the first section of the gospel today. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and she bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, and she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel that I just read, I don't know what it means. And depending on when I'm preaching from that gospel and what other things are going on, it means something different. And so I invite you to let it speak to your heart. Today, I feel a twinkle in Jesus' eye as I read it. I hear him loving that she would not allow division to separate her from the abundance of God. I just hear him so delighted that she refused to see herself as a person of another race. I love that. I love the twinkle in Jesus' eye whenever I can find it, and I think it's there a lot more than I realize but that she affirmed, you know what? I'm willing to be a dog under the table because they have value too. Beautiful. And at St. Catherine's, we get it. It's such a delight to be in the presence of the sound of children in the sound of animals and to be able to look outside and see the more than human world that's flowering as we speak. So the, d the delight or the twinkle that I imagine being in Jesus' eye is about things that are dividing, things that are judging, things that break because of all of that, and then the beauty of when it all comes together again, when somebody sees that there really is only one life, and it's a holy life, and it belongs to God. And we are that life. So, now to move to the more difficult part, which I also think is delightful, but it's a little harder. I believe, I think I've said this before, that the best way to read scripture, it's counterintuitive. Whenever I read scripture, I want to be the good guy. And I want to be like, oh, can you believe they said that? Can you believe they did that? And yet, when I read scripture, it moves me if I'm that guy. If I'm the one who did that thing, if I'm the Pharisee, the Sadducee, the tax collector, the person who doesn't understand. So 
Because if I'm that in the story, then, then my heart opens and I can receive something. So I invite you to do that. At the root of all division, of all separation, is fear. That's what I've come to know. And you can keep the conversation going, but and, and let me know what you discover when you explore that. But whenever I start dividing in my mind in the way that Jesus is talking about it, I'm usually afraid of something. And I was meditating on this passage when I was out with some friends the other night, and there were all these people I didn't know. And I get a little uncomfortable around all the people I don't know, especially because I had my, we were on the beach and I had my puppy and she was misbehaving. I didn't realize until later tonight that she had a tummy thing going on. Um, but I noticed, I was observing myself. And when I met new people and they're introducing themselves and their name, part of me, was summing up whether I liked them or not. How sad. But let's admit it. I, I hope I'm not alone. I hope I'm not. Otherwise, this is really embarrassing. But when I'm meeting somebody, I'm dividing. Is this someone I want to know more? Or is this somebody I don't want to know more? Do I like the way that hat, do I like the hat that they chose? You know, just the way they're talking. And so because I was meditating on this passage, I really felt it with this, with this compassion. I just thought, well, there you go, Allie. There, you, there it is. There it is. And so then I say to myself, well, I wonder what that's about. I wonder why I'm doing that. And it was a beautiful opening for me because I was able to receive each person as the, the gift that they are just because I knew I was doing that breaking, dividing, judging thing. So it's okay to admit it, we all do it. We all do it, especially right now in the political climate where are we in this camp or are we in this camp? If we see a sign, is it the sign of the other guy or is it the sign of, of who I wanna vote for? And I'm all for expressing our, our conscience and, and our passion for what we discern to be the best leader, but it also is dividing us, and that's heartbreaking. But if we can bring that to each other and admit it, then we can be curious, and that's where God's mercy can come trickle in, because this is a story of mercy, a story of love. Because the bottom line is, if the big earthquake hits, I'm not going to care what sign you have on your lawn. I'm going to want you to help me if I'm trapped under something. I'm going to want to help you if you're trying to run for cover. We become human again, and that's the grace of God. So anything that is brave looking at our own divisions is hopeful. I remember when I was in Colorado, and we were working on the issue of race. And it was so palpable how much none of us wanted to perceive ourselves as racist. We just couldn't bear to think that we were racist. And it got angry in people wanting to defend, I am not racist. I look for a culture in the church where we can say, I'm all of that. I divide, I judge, I criticize, I assume, I'm racist, I'm confused. I don't get it. Lord, help me. In your mercy, help me. And that's why I love the song. Um, how does it start? Do not fear. The, the song that we just heard from Isaiah. Um, who can find What's the first line? Somebody find it for me. I see Kathy's looking. The Isaiah passage. Yes, yes, thank you. Say, <clears throat> say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. Oh, I'm so glad. Isn't that beautiful? So if we could just hear, 
you of fearful hearts, me of fearful hearts. Don't be afraid. It's okay. Your God will come. Your God is near. Something else can happen. I'm not going to say much today because we have a picnic to get to. And that's very important. But I wanted to just say one thing, read one poem, and I hope I have all of it. Yes. I'm kind of describing division, which is, which is a kind of war that we have with ourselves and with each other. And what that does and how we heal from it is just knowing that our God is near. And this is a poem that, first a quote, and then a poem by Mark Nepo. And the quote is, eventually, all the love, suffering, and humility we go through, and I want to say something about the humility we go through is admitting that we're all of that. It's, it's, it's a humility that says, oh gosh, I just told you what I do, and now you know, and I'm kind of embarrassed. Next time somebody introduces themselves, if any of you are watching, they're gonna, maybe you'll think, oh, is Allie judging them right now? You know, this is, this is what happens. So when we get honest, it's so, it can be humiliating, but it's a beautiful humility because it opens us to the beautiful love and grace and mercy of God. It's real. So again, the quote is, eventually, all the love, suffering, and humility we go through wears away our walls of resistance until the spirit shines from within us like an inner sun. Eventually all the love, suffering, and humility we go through wear away our walls of resistance until the spirit shines from within us like an inner sun. This is from his book, The Book of Soul. And then I want to close with this wonderful short poem called After the War, After the Division, After the Judgment. After the War by Mark Nepo. How can I be a bridge to help you cross what you need to cross? How can I be a bridge help you cross what you need to cross. This is finally all I aspire to. This is finally all I aspire to, to reach across the divide because I have been so divided. To reach across the divide because I have been so divided. To pick up what is broken because I have done the breaking. To pick up what's broken because I have done the breaking. And to ask for guidance because I too have been so stubborn. By the grace and mercy of God, may we find our way across those divides within and without and to the shining love of Jesus. Please stand with me, and we will read the, the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Welcome to remain standing or to kneel for the prayers of the people. In fact, if you want to sit with a prayerful heart, you can do that as well. We are going to sing the Celtic rune once, and then you'll be invited to bring your prayers forward by placing a stone in the sand. And when you place a prayer stone, you can place it with words or, or without words. We'll begin with 